Hey everybody, in this exciting episode, I am going to teach you how to weave paper cord and weave it in this type of pattern. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. I just want to get this out there that I'm not a master weaver and there are certainly things that I could most likely improve, but this is the process that has worked for me so far. First things first is make sure your spacing is correct with your L nails on the front and back and sides. For the front and back nails, I kept them one inch apart, where on the sides I kept half inch apart. I start off the process by nailing down my paper cord with tack nails. And typically I usually use two tack nails because I don't really trust just using one. With the paper cord attached to the bench, we are starting our weave. We start the weave off with the whole spool and we will start with four strings on the ends and then doubles throughout. One thing to note when you're weaving to the back side you want to hook from the inside out and on the front side you want to hook from the outside in. So since we're wanting four strings we're hooking that first L nail two times. And this is a little snippet of going from the inside out on the back side of your chair. And like I said, on the front side, you will go from outside in. Once you got the four strings on this top, on the front side, you want to jump to the next L nail. This will start the process of the next set of paper cords. And I also highly recommend using a Lazy Susan of some sort to prevent the paper cord from tangling up. And so you do this process until you get to the very end. Things to note is you want to keep it nice and tight, but not too tight. You just want the paper cord to be nice and secure around the bench. So reminder on the front side, you want to go from the outside in and step over to the next weave. And on the back side, you want to go from the inside out on the L nails. Typically to weave a seat, it would take roughly two to four hours. Mind you, I am not extremely fast or have been doing tons of these style of benches, but just put on some good music or a movie and just keep weaving. I actually find it nice and relaxing just to weave and be present in this process. Here's a great example of the back side of the bench. You always want to go from the inside out for weaving the paper cord. Or you can look at it as hooking it on the right side and then getting it over top to the left side. When you're close to the end of the bench, this is where we will do the four strands on top again. So it'll be double on the L nails, on the front and back, and then we end it right there. For ending off the weave, you can either use tack nails or you can weave the string into the sides of the bench. You can see here that I'm weaving on the side of the bench just to give you an example on an option that you can do. Once you're happy with that, you can cut off the paper cord and start nailing down the L nails. You want to make sure that you know where the center L nail is because that will be a good reference for the next section of weaving. And you don't necessarily need to hammer it down extremely tight. You just want to make sure that it holds the paper cord nice and tight and keeps that throughout its lifespan. I measured out roughly 50 feet of paper cord and cut that off off of the spool. Then I took the ends of the paper cord to find the center of the paper cord. Just keep pulling till you get to the very end and then that is your rough center.
knowing the rough center, we attach that to the middle L nail and that's going to secure so we can start weaving in between the paper cord. So this process is a little time consuming because you're basically weaving till, the, till you get to the end of the bench. But here are a few tips and tricks that I have learned so far. Depending on your paper cord, it doesn't have to be exactly the same number of weaves for each section. And my sections were roughly between 4 and 5 weaves around. You want to make sure that the paper cord doesn't overlap either on the top and the front and then making sure that it's nice and even and nice and tight. You can see here that I kind of had an overlapping piece of paper cord. So what I did was loosened everything up and just kind of rearranged the paper cord so it was nice and tight and wasn't crossing each other. Another note, once you get better at it, sometimes you can go around twice at one time before pulling out the extra length, but as you start out, just start out with doing one at a time, and when you feel comfortable, you can try two. Once you get to the very end of the weave, it's time to end it off with a tack. This part is a little bit trickier to getting a hammer in, but you could always invest into those thin tack hammers. That would definitely help. I also use small pliers to hold the tacks since they're extremely small, and I find that helps so much. Once you're done with one side, it's time to do the next side. And basically it's all the same process from front to back. Just keep the spacing relatively even and keep those strands that are going across nice and straight. Again, with the back side of the paper cord, I kept everything relatively similar to the front where there was probably four to five loops for each section. Made sure I kept the paper cord nice and tight and didn't overlap in any sections. Now to start the last section of the paper cord, you tack the paper cord that's onto the spool on the side section there, and this will get you started for the paper cord that runs parallel to the front and back. So once you start the sides, you want to start on the side and I like to measure out throughout the whole section so it gives me the rough center of one side and you want to keep it fairly tight to each other. I found if I tightened one section, hooked it on the L nail, and then pulled it on the other side, it would tighten everything up nicely. And then you can just adjust from there so it's nice and tight and snug. Hooking the nail from front to back from the starting side will help you keep the paper cord aligned without crossing over. And for the second section, you would go under over first. This gives it that nice alternating pattern from over under then to under over and this is a very traditional weaving pattern. And once you get a good feel of those, it is a rinse and repeat process. It's also very easy for a paper cord to cross over, but it's equally as easy to fix. So keep an eye out and try to catch it before you've gone too far and it'll make things a lot easier.
This part of the weaving process is the most time consuming, but it's the most satisfying of them all. You can see the paper cord kind of come to life, and that is super exciting. One thing to note is that you can always adjust the front and back paper cord with just using a hammer and, and tapping it lightly to give it a nice straight line. Typically, I like to check every few weaves just so it doesn't start getting out of hand. Closer to the end, it'll start getting nice and tight. Almost to the point where it's hard to weave that last section. But it's definitely doable and you'll notice that I just weave it one section at a time. So this is the very last section here and you can see how tight it is. I just go one section at a time and take my time with it. And the easiest way to end it off is with tack nails. I again use two tack nails to hammer this down so it's nice and secure. That gives it that nice security for years to come. And for the final section is hammering down those nails. Just ensuring that the paper cord is nice and secure. And just like that, you are done weaving your paper cord bench. Hopefully this helped one of you guys weave your very first bench or even gave you some insight on the Danish paper cord. If you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe button and we will see you in the next one.